hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Um, I actually have a slideshow for y'all. Give me one second. Okay. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, guys, once again, I just want to um, thank all of y'all for coming in here and sharing this um, opportunity with learning about cosmetology and just getting into the career and understanding a little bit more about what cosmetology is. Again, my name is Abrina. Um, I've been a licensed cosmetologist um, since 2012, makes nine years this year. I graduated from Empire Beauty School, um, the Center City campus, and it was a wonderful experience. I actually went part-time, so it took me two years because I was working full-time. And with that, you go to school for four hours in the evening every day, Monday through Friday. And when you go to cosmetology school, there is two parts to that. The first part is theory. And that's actually learning about the science of cosmetology, understanding trichology and what it all entails. And then the other half, um, the next year, you do something called 360 where you're on the floor. And you're actually styling clients and putting that theory into practice. So I've worked in cosmetology field since I was 16. I started off being a shampoo girl. Then I moved up to a stylist assistant. Um, then I became a stylist myself. Then a set stylist, a makeup artist, and I did some massage therapy work. Now, as far as being um, a set stylist, I had was fortunate to work with an agency called Tanique Agency, and I know most of y'all are familiar with the Love and Hip Hop Empire. The first year of the Love and Hip Hop Empire, I was fortunate enough to work on set, and that's a, another vehicle that you can use with your cosmetology experience and license to work on different production sets, editorial sets, um, fashion shows. Everything isn't behind the chair. You don't have to be relegated to being in the salon all day and receiving clients, although that's very fun as well. But there are so many different ways that you can use your cosmetology license that isn't that doesn't just pigeonhole you behind the chair. So let's get into what cosmetology actually is. So the definition is it's the art and science of beautifying and improving the skin, nails and hair, and the study of cosmetics and their application. The Greek um, word for cosmetology is cosmetekos, meaning skilled in the use of cosmetics. So cosmetology is an umbrella that covers all that encompasses beauty. As far as the definition has explained, skin and nails and hair is just not limited, again, to doing hair. A lot of nail artists just have their cosmetology license and didn't necessarily go to nail artistry school. Um, you can do massage therapy. It's a limited massage therapy because massage therapy you, is a science. So you definitely have to, to go deep into massage therapy. You definitely have to go to massage therapy school, but you are licensed to do parts of the body to administer different massages and then there's makeup application that is very um, lucrative because you can do makeup on movie sets um, you can do makeup on tv shows you can do it for weddings um, proms it, there's a lot of lucrative ventures with the cosmetology umbrella that like I said I just want to stress is not limited to being behind a chair and doing hair 
Now, cosmetology is a science, and this particular science is trichology, and is the branch of medical and cosmetic study and practice concerned with the hair and scalp. You can hurt someone <clears throat> if you do not understand the theory behind um, the practice of cosmetology. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much science is actually in it. And so they've gone to school and realized that you spend a year if you go part-time or you spend half a year if you go full-time learning about the science and the makeup and the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You, um, the science, the makeup, and the form, thank you, and the form of how your head and your body is set up. You need to learn about the um, cells and the skin, how it's hard keratin, the different um, amino acids that's in your body that reacts to different chemi um, chemicals that you might use, how your hair is actually a polypeptide chain, and how there are three layers to the hair, the cortex going deep into the middle of your hair and the, the epidermis of the skin, the first layer. It's just so many technical terms that you learn when you are taught the science of trichology and actually what you're doing. It's more than just making someone's hair a cute style, but are you damaging their hair? Did you use too much heat? Is there too, many, too much chemicals in a product that you're using? Did you do a chemical test? People's body react differently to different things that you might administer all in the name of being cute. So yeah, it's really nice to look good. I, when you look good, you feel good, and it actually helps your mental well-being, and it, it helps your mental health. But all that to damage you physically is not worth it. So if you are interested in this career, I definitely um, encourage you to dive deep into the science and the makeup of your body and understand exactly how it works and how all that plays together in order to make someone beautiful without damaging them. So Cosmetology talked a little about going to school. Like I said, I went to Empire, but in the state of Pennsylvania, you need 1,250 hours in order to be able to take your um, boards. You need to take the state board's examination to become a licensed cosmetologist in Pennsylvania. Before you can take the exam, you must complete 1,250 hours of training at a licensed cosmetology school or 2,000 hours at an approved apprenticeship program. So you can get your cosmetology license and your teacher's license. So if you have your teacher's license, you're able to do an apprenticeship if you own the salon or, you know, however you set that up. But the children or the students, not necessarily children, sorry, the students are required to have more hours than if you went into an accredited um, school because um, it's hands-on practice so they really want you to understand exactly what you're doing, um, how you are administering different products, how you are dealing with your clients, and what it is that you're actually achieving. You have to have an objective when you go to school and not necessarily, you know, know exactly what you want to do, but have an objective. Know that you want to graduate. Know that you want to finish. Know that you want to get your license and how you may want to use that license once you've achieved it. And furthering your education, like I say, you can go back and get your teacher's license. I'm actually in the process of doing it now so that I can teach cosmetology. Or, you know, you can get your, uh, go back and be able to do more skincare with a skincare license, estheticianist license, and just be able to do more things with more licensures. Everybody doesn't have to go to college, but you do, I, in my humble opinion, you do need to um, acquire a skill. And cosmetology is a skill and it's not limited to behind a chair. You can do so much with it. And it's, in the, it's an exciting and lucrative business you can make a lot of money being in the cosmetology field, especially when you have learned your skill, you have perfected your skill, and you have something called success dynamics. You know how to speak to your clients, you know how to have an opening ear to your clients, and you are 
willing to go the extra mile for your clients. They will be faithful, loyal, and you will see that reflected in your account. So like I was saying, it's very important to have a practice skill set, to be have a pleasant personality and an open ear to your clients. Again, you can be a really dope stylist or a really dope nail artist or you do some really relaxing massages. But if you have a nasty attitude or you don't have a good um, customer service, you might have the client come to you that one time, really enjoyed your work, but won't subject themselves to your bad attitude or your unpleasantness or not really knowing how to listen and deal with the client, understand what they need beyond the service that you're giving. It, it's actually an all-encompassing field. So you need to know how to talk to people and how to encourage them to come back because mostly your retention is by referral. So if someone has gone to you and they tell someone to tell someone to tell someone to come back, that's how you you know, build your book because people enjoy your attitude. Your hygiene is top notch. It's very important that you are very meticulous about your own hygiene. Your teeth are brushed. Your breath always smells good because you're over people. You're washing, you're shampooing hair and you're leaning over people. So it's important that your body has a pleasant fragrance, that you are a sweet, kind person because you want people to feel comfortable. You want people to want to come back because that's how you make your bread and butter. That's how you make your money. And if you do not secure those things about yourself, then uh, fortunately, unfortunately, people are not going to be apt or willing to come back and receive what you, the skill that you actually are good at, but you haven't protected perfected the customer service of it all so it's more is more than doing a good job but it's presenting yourself in a successful way that people want to continue to come back and receive what you have for them again i cannot stress this enough cosmetology is not limited to styling hair there are so many ways that you can make money and be happy and retire actually in this career um like i said yes you can be a stylist behind a chair styling hair and that's important because that's a um feel that even through the pandemic that never actually um stopped making money now some salons were closed down but if you are multifaceted and you're not just behind a chair there were ways that you were able to make money because women and men couldn't come into the salon their people were making wigs they were selling hair products online they were doing a lot of um zoom classes and tutorials showing people how to do their own hair showing people what ways that they could do to style themselves when they weren't able to get into the class get into the salon and that was able to bring in money because you can charge for your information you can charge for the skill that you have um like i said i've done set work i've done editorial work i've worked on magazines i've worked on editorials meaning like different fashion shows i've done hair um for different shows during the super bowl there's just so much you can do and get connected with people and networking so that you have different vehicles to express your skill in cosmetology um i encourage you definitely to maybe hook up with the once you get your licensure hook up with the agency so that you can get ready, you know, work readily available to you if you do not want to be behind a chair or if you like different um different ways to express your cosmetology, like, like doing makeup. You can do makeup on movies, on TV shows, for prom, for weddings. You can um definitely do makeup for photo shoots. There's just so much money to be made in this industry that's just not limited to being behind the chair. Also, it's very important that you are well-versed in this uh, skill set of cosmetology, that you're not a one-trick pony because um, cosmetology, especially being behind the chair, your hands um, are subject to carpal tunnel, tendinitis. So there's different um, 
occupational hazards when it comes to this field. So you want to be um, multifaceted when it comes to being a cosmetologist where you can um, set up a um, informational session where you're able to teach other people what you know, teach other people what you have gained and garnered by being in this career. Because there's a lot of people who are interested in this beauty field, but don't know necessarily the steps to do to get, you know, to where you are or where you're trying to go. So it's important that you 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 understand and that you do things outside of just going to school to educate yourself. Like I've been to tons of hair shows um, that have taken that, that, that I've been able to travel, going to Atlanta, going to Maryland, out, you know, just outside of Philadelphia learning and understanding my craft and becoming more knowledgeable about different tools, um, different makeup um, applications, different ways to style hair that's less tension on the hair. There's just so much that you can learn that can bring forth a, um, a coin into your pocket. Okay. Um, like I said, you can do facials, you can do nails, um, limited, but you can do massage therapy, skincare. Everyone is on this, you know, um, self love, self equalization kick, and everyone wants to be, you know, do self care. And it's important, and this is where you can um, monetize what you know. So you learn about the skin when you're in cosmetology school, and you learn about the makeup of the skin and what it takes to keep your skin clean, keep your skin clear, keep your skin fresh. And these are things that you can charge other people to learn and to supply a um, skill and a service when it comes to that. You can do facial steam sets. Um, uh, you can do different types of facial work with people that they can't, they feel like they can't do themselves, or you can teach people how to treat their skin and how to, you know, live more clean based lives so that their skin can reflect that way. Drinking water, being fully hydrated so that your skin can reflect what, the, what you want it to reflect. Like I said, editorial work, magazines, um, stories, um, Definitely, since we're in a technology age, it is uh, very important to learn how to be able to showcase your work on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the TikTok. There's so many different, you know, social media outlets that allow you to um, promote what you do, promote who you are, and show what skill set you have in the cosmetology field. And what I'm leaning to, towards doing, teaching. It's very important that you share what you know and that you allow your knowledge to be someone else's knowledge so that you can keep the field going. I believe that's very important. So I'm going to show y'all some of my work. And then afterwards, I'm going to leave some time for any questions or any concerns or just comments that you have. Like I was saying, you need to understand how to be not a one-trick pony. So you cutting, curling, um, coloring. It's a lucrative business that you can make money. Um, extensions, learning how to sew, learning how to um, put on wig caps, um, how to make them melt, definitely how to do micro links. All of that is um, skill sets that you learn that could be lucrative in the business of um, cosmetology, especially cutting and curling. It's very important to know um, geometry and angles and how different styles fit different people's faces, different hair applications um, with different tools, just not always using heat, but knowing how to do cool styles that achieve the same look without necessarily using heat. So the cosmetology field isn't limited to being behind the chair. This is some editorial work I've done, magazine work I've done, and some makeup applications. So I'm gonna leave these next five minutes so we can do some um, 
definitely do some uh, questions if anybody has any. Um, I don't have no question, but I wanted to go off of what I had said in the chat, like, and then I like basically what you were saying about like how you could learn different skills and stuff like that and go for different things to get your coin. And that's the same thing, like you learning new skills and stuff, and then you get more coin by say you, you doing skin or you doing hair. Now you come out with your own skincare product, your own hair care products, and now you can do it and you selling it so other people could do it on their own. That's, yeah. a, that's the thing I like about cosmetology is no end. Like you can constantly build on your skill, build on your profession with cosmetology. Is your name Adrian? Adriana? Adriana, yes. Yes, Adriana. I concur exactly with exactly what you said. Your statement is very profound because it is important to be entrepreneurial in this uh, field. And I love when you made mention about having your own. It's important to learn the science of it because you can comprise your own products that can be amazing because we use people products all the time. This is just people understanding what it took and learning the chemistry of it to understand what it takes to put, make your hair do this or make your skin do that. So I love that statement, yes. You can definitely get your coin, get your money by being an entrepreneur in this field, by coming up with your own product and pushing that product, believing in that product and testing that product, knowing that it works. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's about pressing towards the mark and keep doing exactly what it is that you want to do. Like I said before, having an objective knowing what it is you want to do, what you want to achieve. And you don't have to know that today or tomorrow, but have an idea, have an, a thought, getting that thought rolling and an idea rolling will have, you know, you making a lucrative amount of money in this profession. So thank you for that. Anyone else? Any questions, any thoughts, any statements? Miss, have you ever done um, anything other than hair and then you figured out that that's not what you wanted to do, like in the cosmetology field? Yes, actually I have. That's a great question. Yes, I have. Like I said, I've been um, in the salon since I was 16. So I've been doing, doing hair or styling hair for a very long time. And it got boring for me, believe it or not. It just wasn't exciting anymore. And because I was able to um, hook up with the agency, I was able to experience being on sets, being at fashion shows, being on TV production. And it was so much fun. And just producing different hairstyles and different looks um, was exciting for me. And now I'm very passionate about teaching. I love explaining what I know and the science and the culture behind hair because um, it's not just relegated to, you know, um, black and brown hair or white hair. There's so many different cultures that you should be able to um, service and not just your own people. So learning that and understanding that is very um, exciting to me. And like I said, massage, it, there is so much money in that, guys. It's so much money. And facials, and you don't, like I said, I can't stress this enough, and I know I've repeated myself a lot about this, but you don't have to be behind the chair to make your coin in this field. You do not. So I encourage facials. I encourage nail care. You don't even have to necessarily do um, a, like acrylic nails, but there are men, like you need to tap into different um, fields. Men don't necessarily get acrylic on their nails and things like that, but they like manicures, they like pedicures, and you are licensed to do that when you get your cosmetology license. So um, just knowing who you're marketing to, knowing, you know, what you want to do and how you want to make your money is I mean, especially, um, I've actually gotten to making lip gloss. That's, is a, who doesn't like lip gloss, right? But these are things that you can do when you understand exactly what it is you want to do. Any more questions? I'm sorry, guys. Are there any more questions?
Has anyone ever worked in the cosmetology field before? Um, me, I actually was a shampoo girl and a um and an assistant for like lace and stuff like that. I used to braid, sew tracks, and and that's what actually like made me start doing my own hair because I was working at the salon. And it was like, at this point, I could do it myself. I'm not about to keep going to the salon, paying $300 to get a closure when I could do it myself and make money doing others. So now I do my own hair. I did my own closure now. And I make lip gloss. I haven't dropped my lip gloss yet because I'm still, like, getting the hang of it, finding the right, um, what's the names to use. Yes. Um, I've been going to different, like, Michaels and Target, finding different stuff, <laughs> trying to find the tube and I like the best and stuff like that. So... When I finally get all that together, then I'll drop my lip gloss line because I sell lashes also. So then I'll drop my lip gloss line. Yes, I love it. That's exact. Listen, I am encouraged by that. That is so wonderful. I, you do not have to wait till you're a certain age to go out here and do exactly what it is you want to do. If you are skilled in that and you are, and I love that you said that you're waiting till you get everything together because you don't have to rush it. Make a product that people want to purchase. Make a product that people want. I've seen a question in the chat I wanted to answer. Someone said, what would you suggest to people who want to learn to do their hair? Okay, so this is what I would suggest. I don't want you to damage your hair. And that's easy to do when you're just trying to achieve a style and you don't necessarily know the health behind the style. Because it's really it, lace fronts and melting it down and hiding the lace. It's all cute. But you can rip your edges out to never return again. And you do not want to do that. You need to be healthy conscious when it comes to doing your hair. And not healthy in your body, but health of your hair. Your hair is a living organism. It's, it's actually alive and it grows from your scalp. It's hard keratin, which is the same thing our skin is made out of. So you need to protect your hair and protect what comes out of your scalp by not over putting too much product in it, putting too much heat in it. That damages the hair. And sometimes the hair doesn't come back and you can cause alopecia. It's, you're not necessarily always born with it, but you can have tension alopecia because you're pulling your hair too tight when it comes to braids or pulling your hair too tight when it comes to a sewing. So I would encourage you to definitely learn the health of hair first. And once, you know, um, some natural styles or, you know, if you're going to relax your hair, relax your hair with knowledge, relax your hair with direction, relax your hair with not burning it out because you can cause chemical burns and you can cause your hair to fall out and never to return. So I would encourage you to look at YouTube, read some books, get some knowledge about the skill before you just go ahead and do anything to your hair because that's your hair. That's your crown of glory and you want to keep it healthy. So I hope I answered that. Let me see if there was any more questions in the chat. And uh, let's see, I have low porosity, medium texture, thick type for hair. And that's been a journey, but it's a stroke. Girl, who you tell? I understand that. And that's another thing. Um, learning the jargon um, um, mythology, because everything isn't, I love that she used low porosity. So um, you can do that definitely if you want to know if your hair has low porosity or high porosity, you can do a porosity test. So you can um, pluck a hair out, put it in a cup of water. If your hair takes a long time to sink, you have low porosity. If your hair floats, you have high porosity because it's combating the water. It is important, it is important as black and brown people to moisturize, 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 and to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I say that because our hair is very tight and coily, and um, it, it sometimes um, doesn't receive all the moisture. So it's important that you are constantly feeding your body with healthy foods because that definitely... Um, it definitely reflects the health of your hair. I've seen something else pop up in the chat. Let's see. Um, do you have natural shampoo condition suggestions for color hair? Yes, I do. Yes, there are so many different um, natural hairlines that um, 
that you can use that um, aid in the protection of color here. I love Cantu products. Um, what I will say though, this is what I say. Um, if you find a product line that you like, it is important to use the product line. So a lot of people might use a shampoo from this, a conditioner from that, uh, a, a, a leave-in conditioner from this, and they're wondering why it's not working. And wonder why it's not working and why the hair isn't, you know, uh, responding. It's because you're not using the full line. They all work in tandem. One aids in the other, aids in the other. So um, I definitely would suggest that you get some shampoos that are don't have any sulfate in it, um, that don't have any... Um, Mm, some say, and I, I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I'm almost sure they can't too do that. They might have um, alcohol in it. I'm not sure, but alcohol definitely is drying. It definitely um, dries the hair out. And so you want to use product. I know something called Millie. Her products are really good. She doesn't have any alcohol or drying agents in the hair in her product line. And um, what I'll do is I'll send Miss Melissa a list of some products that y'all can use for your natural hair in order to keep it healthy and not drying. But when you do use the products, I suggest that you use the product line. Let me dip back into the chat. Oh, okay. Someone said Cantu has alcohol in it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Would you recommend Olaplex or is this something that's overpriced? Um, no. Well, see, okay, I'll get back to I'll come back to that. What should you do to keep your hair healthy after you diet? I was getting an OGX. Cantu makes my hair snow in July. <laughs> um, moist, Shea Moisture is really good, too. Okay. Yeah, and for color hair, Cantu makes your color fade. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so there are actually um, shampoo lines, product lines that are geared directly towards colored hair, directly towards um, putting the moisture back into your hair. Because this is what your hair is a cortex. Your hair is a, a polypeptide chain, right? And uh, it has amino acids in it. And when you color your hair, what you're doing is you're, you're pulling the peptides out and your replacement with the color. But the peptides have protein in it and the peptides have moisture in it that keeps your hair strong and keeps the elasticity of the hair and keep it from breaking. But when you take those um, components out the hair shaft and replacement with the color, you're susceptible for your hair being dry, for your hair being coarse, and for your hair breaking easily. So what you want to do is protein treatments and you want to put the things that you're taking out your hair back in your hair. So you want to get products that promote protein, products that promote moisture and the strength of hair. So anytime you have, uh, like I said, and even if you're natural or you're not natural, um, you're pulling things out of the hair shaft to replace it with the color. And you pull the melanin out the hair that has um, its health in the melanin, its protein in the melanin, and you're pulling it out and you're replacing it with an artificial color. So you need products that have um, moisture and protein in it. I hope that helped. I hope that gave you some insight. Um, I do nails. I feel like it's underrated in the cosmetology Towns you feel, but I enjoy it. I love it. Now, yes, I do feel like it's um, underrated as well. Um, and nails is a very lucrative business. It really is. Um, I suggest and I encourage you to keep on that track, perfect your skill, and I'm pretty sure you will be successful in that. Um, everybody here is different. You really got to know that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I completely agree with that. You have, it's important, guys, school, going to cosmetology school has changed my outlook on um, styling hair because I'm telling you, it's more than a look. You want your hair to be nice after the hairstyle is finished with. You know, your hairstyle lasts, well, what, two or three weeks, depending on what application of hair you, application of hairstyling you get, and natural hair way less. So it is important to keep your hair healthy, to eat the right foods, to drink. I cannot 
encourage you more to drink water, 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 water. You will see a significant change in your skin, a significant change in the health of your hair, a significant change in even how your body feels when you are fueling it with water. We're 70, our body is 70% 70, 70 comprised of water. So it's important that you are replacing and moisturizing and hydrating and you will see a reflection in your skin and in your hair. I'm telling you, trust me. Trust me on that. If you trust me on nothing else, trust me on that. Oh. Okay, guys, it is now 1040. Um, uh, I just want to thank you all for, you know, participating today, for giving me some um, insight and in what you're thinking and what you want to do. I want to encourage everyone to go for their dreams, to do exactly what it is that you want to do. Do not allow anyone to stop you from achieving your dreams or making you feel like you're not good enough, making you feel like that you can't do it or making you feel like you don't have the um, brains to achieve it, you do. You are smart, you are intelligent, you can do it. All power is in your hands. Don't let anyone take that from you. Nobody, I don't care who they are. If you wanna achieve something, achieve it. If you wanna do something, do it. If it's not in the cosmetology field, that's fine. Whatever it is that you want to do, guys, I'm telling you, you can do it. But you have to put some work behind it. You have to be responsible. You have to have success dynamics. You have to know exactly what it is you're trying to achieve. Have an objective, guys, okay? Because you can do it. And there is so many things you can do without having to work for someone, but having people work for you. You be an entrepreneur, you having your own product, you understanding the product line and how to pump it. Y'all are in the best age right now. The technology age is so lucrative. You can do, um, even with your product, just the affiliate, you know, of showing other people's product, the whole YouTube uh, culture, just showing people how to do things that they don't know how to do in this field is a lucrative field and because is Corona proof. So even if, you know, we're not done with this pandemic, but even if, you know, the cases rise, you can still make money because you have a skill set that people want to know and people need to know and people need to understand. So guys, I want to, again, thank you. Let me see. I think I saw something in the chat. I want to combine therapy and doing hair science. I want both hairstyles. I love that. Listen, I absolutely love that. Um... Mental health is linked to how you feel. I'm trying, that's why they say, like, when you feel down, get up, get in the shower, get dressed, get cute, because it literally is linked to how you think and how you feel. When you look good, I'm, when you look good, you feel good, and your body starts responding to how you treat it. So, I love that, and I believe that that's what you should do. I believe that's what you should do. So, thank you guys. Um, I guess we're wrapping up. Um, anything else? Because I'm I'm pretty much finished. But if, if y'all have anything else you want to say, feel free to unmute or put in the chat while we still have a little bit of time left. Well, we want to say thank you for presenting. There was some good information um, that you provided oh. to us, <laughs> that you provided to us. Um, and hopefully everyone You're walks away from this um, from this session with a little bit more information. Um, I and hope I information that was you know helpful. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Absolutely, no. I was just saying that I hope everyone walks away from this session with a little bit more information, um, and hopefully um, you have a clear understanding, um, you know, about where you want to do and what you want to do. Um, and we do have about five minutes left. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free. But you're getting a bunch of thank yous in the chat. So, yes. Oh, everyone um, is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Thank you for having me and receiving me and just listening to the information that I had to share. I love this. I absolutely love that this program is readily available to you guys and anything that I can do to help or anything that I can do to mentor, I will be leaving my email with Miss Melissa because it's um, 
it's one thing to teach somebody something, but to walk them through is um, is more helpful when you have someone to, you know, help you and guide you. So I definitely want to put myself out there in that way for you guys. But yes, everyone is more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody have any other questions, comments, or, you know, anything that they want to say right now? Um, otherwise, we'll go back into the main session. Um, going once, going twice, three times. All right. Well, thank you so much again. All right, guys. I'll see you guys back in the main session.